Good evening and welcome to the February 19, 2018 meeting of the Gaston County Board of Education. I'd like to apologize, we're having some te technical difficulties and um, the TV broadcast will be a little bit delayed, but uh, live streaming may be a tad delayed as well. I think we've got it back up uh, to, to speed at this point. I am Kevin Collier, Chairman of the Board of Education. To my left is Mr. Jeff Ramsey, he is the Vice Chair. And I'm gonna allow the uh, board members to introduce themselves, starting to my right with Mr. Dedman and in the township you represent. Catherine Roberts, Dallas. Scott Guthrie, Gastonia. Brent Moore, Crowders Mountain Township. Scott Terry, at large. Thank you. Um, we will be adding to our numbers tonight. Later in our meeting, we will announce the um, newest board member that was selected by the board to represent the South Point Township. The interviews took place this afternoon in a special meeting, and it was indeed a sign of a healthy community. We had 11 top quality applicants, just really, really great applicants that were here for the, representing the South Point Township to fill the seat. We have some other good news to, to share tonight, so let's get started. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is um, have our prayer and our pledge. Mr. Booker. Thank you. Um, as many of you know, last week our nation faced another tragedy with the mass shooting. And this time it was at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida. 17 lives were lost. 14 others were injured in the shooting, some with life-threatening injuries, not to mention the pain that the whole community feels. As part of our invocation tonight, I would ask that we take a moment of silence for those lives that were cut way too short and that we think of those who remain in the hospital today and all of the families attached, attached to them. So if you all would join me in a moment of silence. Thank you. Father God, we give you thanks for calm in the storm. We give you thanks for guidance in these days. We ask that you be with us tonight as we work on behalf of the children and citizens of Gaston County. May you heal our hurting land. Amen. Amen. If you all will join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. The next order on our agenda is to uh, adopt the agenda, and uh, I need to make a couple changes to our agenda. First, the uh, approval and correction of minutes on our agenda should read December 18th, 2017. And the next change, we're going to pull from the consent agenda, item E, the sibling policy, 4171, and we're gonna make that item 10 on the agenda following the school board recognition month. And then all the other items will fall down 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, so on behind that item at number 10. With that change, I need a motion to adopt the agenda. I'd like to make a motion. Motion by Ms. Guthrie, second by Mr. Ramsey. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, show by raising your hand. And it's unanimous. Mr. Booker, good news. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Tonight we're going to start with a, a really fantastic recognition. I would ask that Bobby Kavnar come forward and join us here.
you all are acquainted with Mr. Kavanaugh. He's an English teacher at South Point. He has won county, regional, and state teacher of the year honors, and now he has been recognized as the national title. Mr. Kavanaugh was recognized February 9th as the winner of the NEA Foundation's National Award for Teaching Excellence. Everybody hear that? Yeah. National yeah. Teaching Award. Yeah. We know, Bobby, that this makes you the best teacher in the country. <laughs> if you haven't had the opportunity to go out on YouTube and view the video that the NEA prepared in recognition of Bobby's work, you really need to view that and see what goes on in his classroom. It is truly amazing. You know, last August we had the pleasure of being at South Point High School when he was notified that he was one of the five finalists for this award. We knew all along he should be the one, and in Washington we found that out. So we're very proud to have Bobby as part of our Gaston County community, and we wanted to congratulate him tonight. But in addition, we have with us tonight our own Honorable Representative John Torbett, who wanted to join us to bring words. <laughs> Members of the board, superintendent, most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, Bobby, yes, why, they don't have a Teacher of the Universe award yet? <laughs> <laughs> or is that next year? Oh yeah, I'll, that'll, that'll be the next competition. <laughs> As you can tell right off, we have a lot in common. He's youthful and, well, maybe not that much. <laughs> But there's another world out there, aside from the, the world in, in, in us elected folks get, get to play in. And, and in that world, I, I'm known as Tory's dad. That's right. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> so uh, there is a connection here. And my, my daughter, uh, well, pretty much, that's right, took, took care of both of them from six months, I believe, on. Yeah. Yeah. And someone knows my grandson. Oh, yeah. Oh. Right? Both of them. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So there is that bond there. When I saw the news, we were in Raleigh, and, and the, the top of my head about blew off, Bobby. I'm telling you, it was, it was wonderful news. I have two things I'm going to present you, but I'm going to say the best and move it up to the last. Or say the last, move it up to the first, so it's the best. We were going to try to get you up during session, but time just was, was so quick, and we knew your schedule was tight as well. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go back in session in May in Raleigh. And we're going to have you up to Raleigh. And you're going to be properly, properly congratulated by the entire membership of the North Carolina oh, General wow. Assembly. Wow. Thank you, sir. So I'm hoping these two little things here will hold you over until that time. <laughs> now, we're going to go to the, the big one first. Okay. Speaker Moore, who was Tim Moore from, from Cleveland County, was, was, was actually... He He's not going to make it, but he was really hoping he'd been here tonight. But I think he had some kind of responsibilities in court. Uh, it, that happens sometimes, doesn't it, Counselor? <laughs> but on behalf of the Speaker Moore, I'll let me read this for you. North Carolina General Assembly, House of Representatives, Certificate of Recognition. Be it known to all that this certificate is presented to Bobby Kavnar for receiving the NCA, NEA, excuse me, Member Benefit Award for <coughs> Teaching Excellence. Now, therefore, this 19th day of February in the year 2018, House Speaker Tim Moore congratulates you on your achievement. In witness whereof, I, hear, I have here unto affix my hand, Tim Moore, Speaker of the House of North Carolina. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Now, this one's more special than that one, because this okay. one's from me, okay, Bobby? <laughs> <laughs> and if Tim's watching this, I'm just kidding, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. North Carolina House of Representatives, District 108, Certificate of Acknowledgement and Congratulations, whereas Bobby Kavnar has served as teacher for over a decade. It, you start, what, did you start when you were six? <laughs> Whereas Bobby Kavnar serves as an advisor to the State Board of Education, <clears throat> serves on the Board of the Directors of the North Carolina Public School Forum, participates in Education Policy Fellowship Program, and whereas Bobby Kavnar was North Carolina Teacher of the Year 2016-2017, and now therefore this 19th day of February in the year 2013, uh, 2000, 
Uh, Representative John Torbett extends sincere congratulations to Bobby Kavnar on the nation's, on occasion of being named the nation's top public school teacher, the nation's top public school That's teacher. <laughs> the nation's right. top public school teacher. <laughs> the receipt of the 2018 uh, NEA Member Benefits Award for Teaching Excellence, in witness whereof, I have here to affix my hand, John Torbett, Representative. Bobby, thank you so very, very much. Thank you all very much. Um, I first want to introduce my family because I first and foremost am a Gaston County dad. And so both my girls are in Gaston County schools. This is Carson, who goes to Belmont Central, and Harper, who is at Page Primary right now. And of course, my lovely wife, Jenny, who makes this all possible. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, I didn't prepare anything to say, as usual. And so, um, I do just want to say that this, this title of nation's best public school teacher, um, it, it's just not the case. The truth is that I get to be the one who brings attention to the great things public school teachers are doing, but I, I, I could name 10 at South Point alone who would give me a run for my money any day. And so I'm just really proud that that Gaston County is getting the attention it deserves because we have great, great teachers in Gaston County. And so uh, I'm proud to be here, but I'm most proud to be able to bring this to Gaston County and bring some really positive attention to the great things happening in Gaston County. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Kavnar just said we have a number of outstanding teachers in our district and tonight we would like to recognize seven of our teachers who received the North Carolina Quest Grant to continue to enhance their knowledge and expertise in elementary school mathematics. If I could have the following folks come forward please. Kimberly Harper, Lauren Avery, Tesley Moss, Carol Painter, Karen Shires, Chris Smith, and Beth Washley. 
And these folks represent from across our county, Sherwood Elementary, H.H. Bean, Costner Elementary, Rankin Elementary, Pleasant Ridge Elementary, Sadler Elementary, and the Hawks Nest STEAM Academy. So, Todd, will you present the certificates for us now? And we talk about how we're lifelong learners in Gaston County. This will give these educators an opportunity to earn an add-on license in elementary school mathematics. It'll deepen their knowledge of instructional content, best practices, as they strive to effectively teach elementary math. And we wanted to congratulate them tonight and let them know we appreciate their efforts on behalf of our district. If you all will shake the board's hands, please. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to take the privilege of the microphone to say that while we have uh, a recognition for the board later in the agenda, we have a number of folks in the audience that are going to get fidgety if we don't get moving. And I would like to ask that we allow Mr. Hagens to present the special board recognition at this time. Thank you, Superintendent Booker, and good evening, Chairman Collier, Vice Chairman Ramsey, and members of the Board of Education. National School Board Recognition Month is usually observed in January. However, since our January board meeting was part of the work session retreat, we've moved the recognition to tonight so that it would be seen on Channel 21 and Ustream. Each year we take pride in recognizing and honoring the citizens who serve on the Gaston County Board of Education. Our board members are business professionals, community advocates, and civic leaders who care about the children of Gaston County Schools and the future of our community. Our Board of Education members epitomize service to others through their hard work, leadership, commitment, and expertise in guiding the public schools here in Gaston County. We are a better school system because of the people who serve on the Board of Education and because of our Superintendent of Schools. This year, to help us recognize and pay tribute to our Board of Education members and Superintendent Booker, we chose an elementary school for each board member and had a class at the school to adopt that board member. Tonight, representatives from the schools are here to present a framed picture of the class to the board member along with a special thank you card. When I call your name, board members, if you will come down front and we will have the representatives from the schools, the children and the teachers and the principals to come forward uh, from those schools where the board members have been adopted. And Mr. Collier, we will begin with you. Our first board member to recognize is our chairman, Kevin Collier. Mr. Collier represents the Riverbend Township. And with us today are Libby Thompson. She is a student in Hannah O'Neill's second grade class at Pinewood Elementary School and with Mrs. O'Neill and the student, we have the principal of Pinewood, Kathy Withers. And Mr. Collier, I think she's got a gift there for you. Thank you so much. And where are you in there? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what is this here? Oh and this is Good. our way of saying thank you for all that you do for us. We're very proud to be part of Gaston County Schools. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
to recognize our vice chairman, Jeff Ramsey, who is an at-large member on the board. We have Kane Moore. He is a student in Amy Kloniger's kindergarten class at Catawba Heights Elementary School. And with uh, Kane in, and Mrs. Kloniger is the principal at Catawba Heights, Cindy Strap. Next, with the presentation to Lee Dedman, who represents the Gastonia Township, is Danny Romero from Gardner Park Elementary School. He is in Catherine Abernathy's first grade class, and with him is the Gardner Park principal, Jamie Wallace. Next, we have Cooper Hamrick from Cherville Elementary School to honor and recognize Terry Ussery, who represents the Cherville Township. Cooper is a student in Alexa Feller's third grade class at Cherville Elementary, and also with him tonight is the school principal, Sean Hubers. Now we would like to honor Catherine Roberts, who represents the Dallas Township. From Carr Elementary School, we have Erin Buchanan. She is a student in Jenny Smith's first grade class. And with Erin tonight is Principal Rebecca Duncan. Over here. Can you see the back end right there? 
We're saying hi to her via Beth. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take a picture real quick. Oh, Look, she's hotter than me. No, no. It's a little bit higher. That's good. Really pretty good. Got her more abs out To recognize Doc Guthrie, who represents the Gastonia Township, we have three students from Robinson Elementary School. Lydia Morgan, Lillian Galdamirez, and Maggie Collins. They are students in Jenny Carper's kindergarten class at Robinson Elementary. And with them this evening is their principal, Torben Ross. <laughs> Here from Sadler Elementary School to recognize Brent Moore, who represents the Crowders Mountain Township, is Nazareth Prieto. And he is a student in Jennifer Kendrick's fifth grade class. And with um, Nazareth and Mrs. Kendrick is their principal, James Ramirez.
here to recognize Dot Cherry, who is an at-large member of the Board of Education. We have Kendall Gardner and Tyler Walker, who were students in Jonna Beckham's second grade class at H.H. Beam Elementary School. With them is Principal Lee Smith. Now to honor Superintendent Booker this evening, we have Elaine Bolt and Grant Austell, who are students in Elizabeth Grant's first grade class at Hawks Nest Steam Academy. We would like to thank all of the children for being here this evening, and a special thank you to their parents, the teachers, the assistant principals, and the principals for helping us with our board of education recognition. All of us in Gaston County Schools, the students, teachers, employees, and parents, we appreciate what you do as our board of education, and we thank you for taking good care of our schools. And that completes the presentation. Okay. 
Todd, thank you for that presentation. And Chairman Collar, thank you for allowing us to move that to this point of it. And that will conclude our good news for this evening, sir. All right, the next item on the agenda is public expression. Uh, before we begin, let me outline the rules of procedure. Citizens wishing to make comment and who have completed a request to speak form will be recognized by the chair and then requested to step to the microphone for their comments right here. Citizens, when you're there, will you please state your name and address for the record. Comments will be limited to three minutes. Our board clerk will have a sheet that says, red sheet that says one minute and then time. The members of the Board of Education do not respond to public expression during public expression. Public expression does not allow for comments of confidential or personnel matters. The chair shall rule on all points of order during public expression. The first person we have to speak is Anna Cusera. Did I get that right? Cusera. Okay. Good evening and thank you for this opportunity. My name is Anna Cuchera. For the past two and a half years, I've been blessed to be a parent of three children in Gaston County Schools. I've also been blessed to experience firsthand the way both their elementary school and their middle school have swiftly and thoroughly handled threatening incidents to my satisfaction. But not all kids have the confidence to tell an adult when they're being isolated or harmed. Not all kids have parents who advocate for them. Not all kids have a peer support system. Middle and high schools are mental health war zones. The war is unique in that the juvenile attackers don't even understand their own purpose for attack or what the fallout will be from their senseless assault. They use the same weapons of psychological warfare that men have used since prehistoric times, such as intimidation, isolation, and humiliation. Victims on their radar are already battling with their own natural internal struggles as tweens and teens. When out of the blue, they are locked into the attacker's sight under rapid fire. The length of their stay on that radar depends on outside defenders who come to their aid. Until they are rescued, they may be emotionally tormented, physically harmed, and socially ostracized. As we know, even when soldiers make it off the battlefield alive and physical wounds heal, scars remain and they are never the same. Some kids, through either nature or nurture, have been better equipped for this battle. They help those who are under attack. They can identify themselves and stand guard. There are adults in our community who are armed with wisdom, knowledge, and training who can help pull these kids off the battlefield, tend their wounds, as, and serve as a mental health guardian. We can use kids' primary communication tool for good by offering them a simple means to send an SOS signal via text when they have been targeted or are witness to an incident. This will not happen on its own. Students know what bullying is. And in fact, that word is not strong enough because it makes the true problem of verbal and physical assault as well as isolation seem like child's play. But how can we expect these same kids to know how to stop the cycle of student isolation when they still need to be reminded to eat their vegetables, to get a good night's sleep, and to wear deodorant? They still need our help. Like any battle, an assembly of leaders is needed to assess the threat, consider the cost, develop and execute a strategy. This is why I'm proposing the Gaston County Schools Light Guard Task Force. Stand Up Gaston has done a great job of outlining what bullying is and identifying its signs. Light Guard would offer a continuous, visible presence of people in action. Light Guard would offer continuous, visible distribution of information to parents and students on reporting protocol, guidelines for disciplinary action, juvenile justice referral procedures, and civil legal rights for victims. Light Guard would not only support the reinforcement of good behavior, but also raise awareness of the consequences of bad behavior. Ms. Kuchera, if you'd wrap it up, please. Okay. I respectfully ask that you consider the proposal you have before you and approve it for the sake of kids in our community and the Gaston County Schools mission to educate all students in a safe and nurturing learning environment. Thank you for your time.
Our next speaker is Mr. Roland Hoffman. My name is Roland Hoffman. Uh, my address is uh, 2200 uh, Williamsburg Drive, apartment number one. <clears throat> Thank you for um, giving me this opportunity. And uh, hopefully I can get through this. I'm kind of nervous. I've never been to a, a Board of Education meeting before. I come before this board to bring some ugly truths and to the light. We are living in a time when school safety is in the news and this week we all saw the, the horrible results of violent actions on our school campuses. We live during a time when women are coming forward to speak out their Me Too experiences with sexual assault and sexual harassment. The number of women who have experienced this kind of behavior is startling. Perhaps you have wondered how you can make a difference, what you can do to change a difficult situation women and children too often experience. Maybe it doesn't seem like it's your problem. <sighs> then it hits home. Suddenly, it's a gun violence in our neighborhoods, sexual harassment at our workplace, and sexual violence in our children's schools. What do we do? Well, I tell you what I, what I, let me see. Well, I will tell you what I have to do. I have to stand up when school officials won't, when school officials want to turn a blind eye to sexual violence and harassment. I have to stand up because my conscience won't let me do otherwise. Not only because it, it is happening to my daughter, but also because it could be happening to yours. Ashbrook High School has a problem with sexual harassment. Our daughters are at Ashbrook should never be told they need to toughen up and deal with it. Our sons at Ashbrook need to be held accountable for their behavior so they can grow up to be good family men. Parents and students who report sexual harassment at Ashbrook should not be retaliated against because they speak up. But the sad truth is, these things are real issues at Ashbrook. Daughters are told to toughen up. Our sons are left unaccountable and family members lose their jobs because they speak out when administrations Ministers at Ashbrook want to sweep sexual assault under the rug. I know because this thing has happened to my family this school year. Last month, last week, and today, it could happen to your family. Your, your daughter is not safe as long as report, reported complaints of sexual harassment are left unaddressed. Behavior like sus, sexual harassment grows in a permissive environment so if you are concerned if you if your conscience pushes you to stand up for your children then I then please inquire about the circumstances that brought me here to speak in front of you tonight because I am not a man used to speaking in front of crowds and five minutes is not nearly enough time to tell you about what brings me here tonight please ask me what happened to my daughter and investigate the event so that it doesn't occur to other children. Thank you. Our next speaker is Catherine Donica. My name is Catherine Donica. My address is 2200 Williamsburg Drive, apartment one. In my role as an older sister, I have always tried to provide support and guidance to my little sister. This, is, this situation is especially important as it relates to what many women have had to endure, sexual assault. The vast majority of sexual assault victims suffer in silence in their own personal hell. I know this from experience. My little sister has shown great bravery, courage, and determination to advocate for her own well-being. She is young and inexperienced, though she needs the help of those around her in order to protect her. No one ever expects that people in charge of protecting your, our youth would be the ones actively fighting them. 
We know that in her coming forward that there would be people doubting and blaming her. We knew it would be hard, but in the wake of the Me Too movement, we believed that it, most importantly, those who are supposed to protect her would give her her due rights to protection. That was not our experience at Ashbrook High School. In interviews for Gaston County jobs, people are asked, what is right? Doing what is right or doing the right things? Administration at Ashbrook High School has seemed to chosen neither. It seems as if we've been fighting for her protection since day one there. It has been exhausting and I has had unforeseen reper repercussions for myself and Caitlin especially. Should she not be able to feel safe at school? If the administration is actively retaliating against her, shouldn't she be able to have her family by her side? I am her emergency contact at school and have been involved in her school since the day she started at Ashbrook. On January 10th, that all changed. Her father was out of town and I had gone to the school to see that she could finish finals amicably. Previously unannounced to me, I was only allowed to talk to Officer Hamrick. I had had my EMS uniform on because I had worked 6 p.m. 6 a.m. or 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. the night before and then went to class after taking my toddlers to daycare. We are required to wear uniforms to class and I was exhausted and ready to go home. During my interaction with Officer Hamrick, he was aggressively antagonizing Caitlin and our family. Our conversation was tense, but I retained my composure, even th through finding that he was on the side of the administration and their vendetta against, Ka against Caitlin. Even though accusers are supposed to be believed above the accused, he was fighting for the boys who had assaulted Caitlin. At the point when I walked out of the school, he told me, if you believe her, then I am done talking to you. Later that day, he called my boss, who forced me to resign because he had told them that he would have arrested me if I had not been in my uniform. I believe that he would have arrested me anyways if he was legally enabled to. This is the consequence of standing up for what is right. Not only did I lose my job I loved and was pr proud to have, helping and protecting people on their worst days. My sister feels guilty for something she is not responsible for. We should be able to feel confidence in our schools for providing help and protection to their best, to have the best interests of their students, to advocate for them in their times of need. Thank you. Our next speaker is Ms. Caitlin Hoffman. My name is Caitlin Hoffman and I res resign in 220 Williamsburg Drive, apartment number one. Um, my name is Caitlin Hoffman and I am not only a student at Ashbrook High School, but I am a sexual assault victim. I walk through those doors every day expecting to be safe, but never once was I. I've had multiple incidents at Ashbrook where I was assaulted. I reported each of these incidents, but nothing was done. Instead, I was told, you need to defend yourself, that you're in high school now. I was, in fact, dismissed by the very, very people set to help and protect me. The more we spoke out, the more we were shut down and fought against. I was kicked out. I was told I was causing too much drama, that they'll sign a waiver to send me to any school I want, and to let this go away. But I'm not just fighting for myself anymore. I'm fighting for the ones who don't have a voice. And I'm fighting for the ones who, become, who can become future victims of this foul play. In this day and age, we are thought to think we could stand up and be supported. But Ashbrook has done nothing but try to cover up what happened and the crimes they committed. These people aren't someone I want in our schools and definitely not someone that I would trust with the well-being of your child. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Luato. Is there anybody else that has signed up? Okay. And that concludes our public expression. The next item on the agenda, agenda is to approve the minutes. This is an action item for the December 18th meeting, 2017. Motion by Mr. Dedman, second by Ms. Cherry. Any questions or discussion? 
Seeing none, all those in favor, show by raising your hand. And it's unanimous. The next item is the appointment of the South Point Township board member. This is an information item. I'd like on behalf of the board to congratulate Justin Davis, who was selected at a special meeting earlier today to fill the vacancy created by the resignation of Chris Howell for the South Point Township. The board reviewed written out applications, including written responses to questions before interviewing 11 incredible candidates. The board ultimately subject, selected Justin Davis to serve alongside this board. I want to thank all the candidates on behalf of the board who came out today and, and interviewed. Uh, again, it's, it's really good to see so many capable and qualified individuals willing to serve. We will work with Mr. Justin Davis to determine a date for his swearing in ceremony. And our next board meeting will be March the 5th, 2018. Hopefully Mr. Justin Davis will be sworn in by that date and will be able to join us at that time as a full board member. Mr. Davis is here in the audience. If uh, the board members, I'd like to acknowledge his presence and thank you for, for uh, being willing to serve. The next item is school board recognition month. Mr. Booker. Uh, Mr. Hagan's covered that for you in the good news and I just would like to again thank you for the work that you do on behalf of all the citizens and the students. Okay. That brings us to the next item, our sibling policy, 4171. Has everyone had a chance to read through it? Do we... Uh, okay, it's been... We made one small change to the policy from our first reading. Okay, Dr. Balknight. Yes, sir. Good evening, Chairman Collier, board members. I would like to walk you through our sibling policy. But first, I would like to acknowledge, I see several members of the sibling policy committee out in the audience. It's been great work. I would like to thank this board for allowing us to have a committee to come together to develop a sibling policy as we continue to grow our choice options in Gaston County. So the purpose of the committee was, as I outlined just a moment ago, to have a policy that supports the growth of our choice options to keep families together as we have these choice options grow in the county. So we have gathered stakeholder input and we've had several meetings. Here is just a diagram of the, the folks that were participants in the policy committee, school administrators. As I said, I see parents in the audience that were part of that. Our student assignment staff, board members were part of the committee, and also myself. We originally started out with having three meetings, but we expanded to one additional meeting to gather some additional feedback after we finalized the draft policy. So we started this process on November the 6th. We structured the committee, gathered participation from schools across the district, and had a great robust committee with lots of discussion, and I have listed the dates of our meetings that we've held. So I want to just give you the highlights of the sibling policy admission decisions. So we will of course use with our sibling policy and other things efficient use of our facilities, academic behavior and attendance requirements. And each of our choice options will, will have specific academic requirements as well. Then we have our application period for families to apply for a choice option April the 1st through May the 15th, which is aligned with our transfer window that's open as well. Each child will be asked to complete a separate application for their choice. The thing that we uh, tweaked a little bit after the initial policy was posted was the def definition of a sibling and as well as the definition of a parent. If you have the original version of the sibling policy, we did not include in there adoption. So we want to make sure that we included that in the new policy so that we wouldn't include any type of family in our county. So recommendations. Our children that are in our choice program, for example, Hawks Nest STEAM Academy. They would automatically be allowed to be seated at our Stanley Middle School STEAM Academy. And our eighth graders, if we have a high school pathway that's connected to a choice program, they would automatically be seated at the end of their eighth grade year at our high school program. The remaining applicants will be selected for those seats through a lottery process. Our siblings, of course, will be given priority as outlined. We will use our sibling policy in grades kindergarten, sixth grade, and ninth grade, the entrance years, for our program. We will only honor the sibling policy when the siblings are at the same site. So if an elementary student 
was applying for a new seat in a school, a kindergarten seat, they could not apply as a sibling if their brother or sister was in the middle school program. They need to be in the same facility at the same time. We also want to talk about multiples. So we have a 15 to 20 percent if you see the entrance for seats. We have the, the window of the 15 to 20 percent because we want to make sure as we're running our lottery, if the last child selected is a multiple or a twin, that we're able to have room for the sibling to come in as well. Again, trying to keep families together. So this applies to siblings within the same facility and the same program. Any questions? Any questions? Any comments or questions? All right, seeing none, this is an action item. Mr. Roberts, motion. I would Go ahead. like to make a motion to accept this policy. Okay. Second by Mr. Dedman. Any more questions or discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, show by raising your hand. And it's unanimous. Thank you, Dr. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Balknight. Um, You've got the next item, the classroom moment. Yes, sir. It is my pleasure and privilege to invite Ms. Kathleen D'Avria up and as well as some of our virtual academy families. This is a new experience for us to present our virtual academy to talk about our school day with you. So we're very excited about that as well. You'll bear with me for a moment. The screens are not matching the PowerPoint. We may need some assistance. The screen, I think, is, let's see. I have it, Mr. Haggins. I just want you to walk across the room. <laughs> So again, let me introduce Ms. Avery, who has worked extremely hard to get the program off the ground. Ms. Brooks is also here with us tonight as she works with Ms. Avery as the middle school executive director. And we have families with us as well to share their experiences. So I'll turn it over to Ms. Avery. Good evening, and thank you for letting us have a little time here tonight to highlight the great things that have been happening this year at Gaston County Virtual Academy. I'm here tonight with two of our outstanding students. I have Harper Line and Jalen Villorio. Harper is a seventh grade student, and Jalen is in eighth grade at the Virtual Academy, and we are excited to share a rather unique classroom moment. Uh, but before we do that, what I want to do is just take a few moments to remind you all of the Gaston County Virtual Academy. Uh, we are a school of choice for middle school students. All of our students take their courses completely online. They do not report to any brick and mortar location during the day. They do their work wherever and whenever they have access to the internet. Our students have enjoyed a lot of flexibility with this program and they have also appreciated the fact that we are able to really personalize the education that they are receiving. So a few questions that we typically get asked at the Virtual Academy is who are our virtual students? Well, over half of the students who applied and were accepted into the Virtual Academy came from a homeschool background. We heard from many homeschool families that they, again, appreciate the model of flexibility, but they were looking for some help and support with the content as they approached those middle school years. Uh, but we aren't just for homeschool students. We have taken students from several different educational backgrounds. We have Gaston County School students, students from charter schools, students from private schools, you name it, they're here in the Virtual Academy. What classes are our students taking? Well, our students get a full middle school curriculum. Our students, all of them take math and language arts, and the majority of them are taking the four core courses, so that includes the science and social studies as well. But we also offer electives for students who are interested in music, in PE, in Spanish, in art. We have those options for the students as well. And then, of course, we get asked the question of how do we support our students? Well, our students are Gaston County School students, and so they have access to all of the student services that we provide to our brick and mortar students. In terms of academic support, they have their online teachers, they have online tutors, and they also have Gaston County School teachers who serve as face-to-face -face tutors if they should need that. But beyond the academics, we now at the Virtual Academy have our own school nurse, we have our own social worker, 
we have our own um, guidance counselors and our own EC teachers. So we have st services for all of our students should they need those services because again, they are Gaston County School students. Without further ado, I would like to turn it over to Harper to talk a little bit about her classroom moment. First, I wake up in the morning at 7 o'clock and I do my Bible studies for 20 to 30 minutes, get ready and eat breakfast. Then I go outside and lay out my chickens and get them food and water, and I play with them for about 10 minutes and spoil them with treats. Then around 8.30, I start on my work by first setting up my area and logging into my school, in, into the school and checking my messages from my teachers. When I get on the home page of the school, I first go to the calendar and write down all the work that needs to be done for the day in my planner. After that, I start on my first subject, math, and work on math for about two hours, depending on the amount of work. Then I do science, which is my favorite class, for about two hours. Then I take a lunch break for 30 minutes, depending, unless I go out for lunch, then I usually eat for 12, from 12 to 120. After lunch, I do my last subject, language and it usually takes less time so it takes me around an hour or hour and a half then I finish all then after I finish all my school it's around three o'clock and I'm free for the rest of the day so I like to make a craft exercise do yoga ride bikes go on a hike or play golf so that's why I do this whole day <laughs> so as you can hear Harper has a very traditional school day but just in a non-traditional school setting some of our students, they are logging in much later if it's a case where they have practice or they have to go um, be in the gym all day for a practice or something like that. So not all of our students necessarily follow the same routine that Harper does, but that's the beauty of Virtual Academy is that they're able to really make that routine whatever needs to work for them. The last thing I would just like to highlight were our enrichments. This is something I think that sets Gaston Virtual Academy apart from other virtual programs, and that's the fact that we provide many opportunities for our students to come together. Research shows that middle school students need that social interaction. So we have had numerous enrichments over the course of the year. We've had students come together for a luncheon just as a meet and greet. This was back in September. When Sean Golden was doing his Golden Opportunity Talks at all, of the, at all of the middle schools, our students were invited to attend. So we actually have a student here who was at the WC Friday um, Golden Opportunity Talk. Our students were able to take a field trip to Daniel Stowe Botanical Gardens, and they were able to get out there in October during the Chinese Lantern Festival, and they really, this was a popular one, they really enjoyed that. In November, we had parent conferences, just like our brick and mortar schools did. And then at the holiday time, we also had a holiday party. So the kids just came together for cookies and music and playing bingo. Most recently, we got together and we went to Kate Skate um, as an opportunity just to interact. Some future enrichments that we have are going to be EOG test prep sessions. We're also working with the curriculum facilitators to provide curriculum um, experiences in math and science so they can get some hands-on experiments with those different content areas. Any questions? Ms. Roberts. Since we have students logging on at different times of the day, um, are there hours set out for their online teachers and tutors and you brought up uh, social workers, guidance counselors, how does that work? So uh, the online teachers are, um, they don't have synchronous class times, everything is completely asynchronous and the online teachers respond to the students should they need any help within 24 hours, that's sort of the guidelines that they follow. Um, as far as the student support services, those are really on appointment basis, but again, if, if a student needs one of those services, they typically reach out to me and we coordinate how they can get up with that person that they need. Ms. Cherry. Is there a minimum number of classes that they have to take? Yes, the students have to take three courses, the math and language arts being um, two of those, but then that third course option is up to whatever might interest them. Okay. Thank you. Is that year long or semester? Uh, so we model what our middle schools are doing. So math and language arts are year long, but the science and social studies have been semester. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Um, I didn't get Miss uh, Harper or the other young lady that's with you tonight. Jalen. Jalen. Okay. Yeah. Jake. Um, I really enjoyed taking this class in school. It's very flexible and I'm able to do 
a lot of extracurricular activities and spend more time with my family. So. Great. Jaglyn Harper, thank you for coming tonight and sharing with us. All right. <laughs> to it if you want. All right. The next item is the uh, award the RFP for Wide Area Network. Uh, this is an action item. Mr. Booker. Uh, members of the board, this is one you are familiar with seeing. It is the way that we connect all of our schools and central office locations to the Internet. It's through a Wide Area Network, and we purchased that service through an, um, a bid process, and we are recommending the award to AT&T. And the contract amount of $408,000 is a budgeted item, but because of its size, it comes to you for approval, and we would recommend approval. Is this just a one-year thing, or is this uh, beginning of a new one? This is, we'll start our new contract, and it is typically runs for a three-year period with annual renewals. Last year. Great question. Last year's cost? Cost of the connectivity has decreased, and um, that's why we bid it at this point, trying to save the district some dollars. So we have that money somewhere. Oh, yes, sir. This is a, a line item that is in your budget. Or there's 132,000, or we can use somewhere else. Yes, sir. Uh, as, as we've discussed in the technology budget, with the aging of our smart boards and things, it just right. it'll allow us that flexibility. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, this. Uh, no, sir. We were the pre, uh, predecessor to what is now known as Comcast. This is an action item. I need a motion to approve. Motion. motion to approve by Ms. Guthrie, second by Mr. Ramsey. Any other questions or discussion? Uh, Mr. Debman, to the point of uh, fiber, I, I just got fiber in, in my area of Charlotte, and with competition in town, people are giving better pricing. I can say that. I have experienced it firsthand. I thought it was lower just that we'd be able to use that for some of something. Yeah. just doesn't find a fly away. <laughs> no, sir. We will but not but our area is away. benefiting from uh, sure competition. Yes, sir. I'm sure that they have a wish list already. <laughs> uh, uh, Develop so that they can replace items. That okay. okay. All right. Any other discussion or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor, show by raising your hand. And it's unanimous. All right. The next item is the Advanced Ed Accreditation Review. Everybody had a chance to interview with the crowd. I thank the board members for taking the time to do that. Uh, whatever you guys did, you wowed them. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Booker. Uh, yes, I'm passing along a letter that we received from Dr. Barker, who was the lead evaluator, where he thanked you all for the participation. He was very complimentary of the system and our openness to his evaluators. Mr. Collier attended the summary uh, conference that they provided now, and he quickly apologized to, this is a new process, Advanced Ed. They 
we're in a five-year cycle and we're usually the first of their cycle in the five-year period. And so he said, you're used to coming in and getting a, a report that has line items and things. Now we submit the port report, it is reviewed, and you will get a more in-depth written report in 30 to 45 working days. But what he did want to highlight were their findings of powerful practice. And uh, he found that the leadership of Gaston County Schools has created a culture of engagement and shared decision making, supporting the mission and vision of the district. Uh, a second powerful practice that he wanted to point out was the well-defined process to promote organizational effectiveness to achieve its goals of community, communication, and choice with fidelity through data-driven decision-making and affording autonomy for its leadership team. Uh, they asked that uh, we continue to work on the journey of improvement regarding our overall proficiency of our students and that that would be what they would be looking for. This five-year process has a mid-year check-in and that would be what they would be looking for us to report on in mid-year because they saw the plans, they saw the implementation that had gone on over the last four years and we're just looking to see the next step of that. So we had numerous members of our community. They spoke with over 400 different people between their school visits. And remember there were two announced school visits and then 12 unannounced where they just showed up at the school. And our, school staff did a, an admirable job with that and so we appreciate all of the community leaders parents that attended the interview sessions and gave input on this valuable process and so thank you all and we're pleased to have it behind us I'm sure. <laughs> one thing i wanted to point out is that they spoke to 250 students <laughs> they pulled students aside and spoke to the students about are the teachers just doing this today or do they do this every day? So uh, the, they, they didn't just try to find out if the show was being put on. They wanted to know if this was the daily structure and routine of what our teachers are doing. So I thought that was, and, and that, that was more than anybody else they talked to were students, which I thought was uh, um, a critical piece of what they've done. And I had no idea they would do that. But uh, I was, my takeaway, Mr. Booker was, uh, um, very proud of this school system, very proud of this board and um, what we've been able to do and how we've, as uh, we say in um, sports, how we've moved the ball. Well, so. I, I think we, we need to commend the accountability department led by Derek Jackson. Uh, he gave up a significant part of his life over the last 18 months leading this initiative and his whole team in particular, Rebecca Powers uh, spent the whole weekend and then it was a real team effort the four days that those folks were here with our uh, instructional technology facilitators serving as uh, gophers and chauffeuring folks around. So it was the total district did a great job. When you look at the school quality factors that all of our schools completed, it, it was a, a document that they were very impressed with at the level of detail and commitment that we had to the process. I do know that this, like this method much better than the other method. Mr. Brooker, I'm curious, how much does this cost our school system to be accredited by this group? Uh, depending on the year, sir, it's in the thirty to $40,000 range. What would happen if we didn't do this? Uh, some of our peer groups have elected to let this go by the wayside. We believe it's great to have a third party come in and give us a criteria of evaluation. And they set different parameters for us to look at. Some schools have done away with SAT. That's not a yes, sir. criteria. Yeah, some districts only do accreditation for their high schools. $30,000 30 to 40000 And then the engagement year, it's more because you have to put people up. And it was Our engagement team was 10 people from across the country. We pay their total cost. We budgeted approximately eighteen to twenty thousand this year for the engagement review. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Booker. The next item on the agenda is the annual engagement letter with the independent auditors, Mr. Hoskins. Uh, two years ago uh, this month, uh, this board approved a three-year contract uh, with the audit firm Anderson, Smith & White uh, to perform our annual audit of financial statements. 
Uh, so this is the third year of that three-year contract. Um, as a part of that agreement, every year this board has to approve the engagement letter uh, with this firm. Uh, the price was already set three years ago. It has not changed from what it was last year or the year before. Uh, so we are asking that you approve uh, the engagement letter with Anderson, Smith, and White to perform our audit for this year. Thank you, Mr. Hoskins. I need a motion. So moved by Mr. Ushery, second by Mr. Moore. Any questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor, show by raising your hand. And it's unanimous. Uh, one other thing, it, at your uh, desk you should see a copy of the compliance report. Uh, this is done by Anderson, Smith, and Wyke every year, and this is for the last fiscal year. Um, if you don't mind, if I could turn your attention to page four. The purpose of this is to ensure the compliance with state and federal programs. So on page four, uh, you will see their opinion of our compliance with federal programs in which they state that uh, we comply in all material respects uh, with the types of compliance required by the federal program. So this is the highest uh, level of opinion that you can get. And also on page seven, a uh, similar opinion for our state contracts in which they have, uh, in their opinion, stated that we comply in all material respects with the state compliance uh, requirements for, for uh, the past year. Uh, in addition, every year we have a couple of uh, deficiencies, uh, generally two deficiencies. Number one is uh, we're allotted a certain number of months and positions uh, from the state uh, and if we don't use those months or positions, then we have to give money back to the state. And so every year we try to get as close as we can uh, to that number, but we slightly go over. And so when we go over, we have to reimburse them with the amount of, of funds that we went over, uh, and they write a, a, a deficiency. Uh, $39,000 was for Yes. Which uh, is really a good thing because as a school when you have instructional money you want to spend every dime and hopefully if you spend it over so that's right. what I'm right we, we do not want to send back money that we could put in the schools to help educate kids in, in Gaston County um, also we had the same issue with uh, with some federal money so those those are the two deficiencies that you see every year How much was the federal money? Uh, it's on page 11 uh, there's there's several different uh, numbers for that uh, and also we had a deficiency um, about nine or ten years ago when we when we adopted GASB 34 this is a new uh, gap requirement uh, we began putting unearned income as a liability uh, we've been doing that for about eight or ten years and one of the uh, outfits that uh, reviews our financial statements that gives us the, the certificate of financial um, award uh, they looked at that and said you really should be putting that uh, in other liabilities rather than other revenues so we made that change and that's the other deficiency so and that's all i have mr chairman unless you have any questions does the board have any other questions thank you mr hoskins thank you that brings us to the next item on our agenda which is the consent agenda we'll approve the agenda by the Motion and a second. Motion by Ms. Cherry, second by Mr. Ushery. Any questions or comments about the consent agenda? Seeing none, all those in favor, show by raising your hand. Mr. Devin, and it's unanimous. Okay. Superintendent comments. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the board. As you know, today was an optional teacher work day. At our retreat, we talked about trying to preserve that day if we didn't have any other weather, and we were fortunate that we were able to have that day. I don't want to jinx it, but we hope that we'll continue to have good weather because our next potential makeup day is in March, and we would like to do all we can to preserve spring break. We know that is important to our families as well as to our staff, and we hope that the winter weather is behind us. We're enjoying the warm weather that is upon us at this point. Um, thank you for allowing us to have the moment of silence early. We want to just assure our parents, 
students and employees. There was a lot of questions after that tragedy. And we were very fortunate that law enforcement reached out to us to express their willingness to enhance what they were already doing. And through the uh, Police Chiefs Association, they actually sent out a memorandum that said, let's increase our presence, parking in parking lots to fill out reports and doing things. We're just really fortunate that our local law enforcement works as partners with the school system. Mm -hmm. uh, when you go to our large athletic events, you'll see a lot of law enforcement there and a significant part of them, we're not paying for them to be there. They're just there to facilitate us and support us. And so we wanna thank law enforcement and we wanna let everybody know that safety is a priority for us and we just uh, pray that we don't have to deal with it. Mr. Booker, I hate to interrupt you there, but I, I have to say thank you for that because um, I went by the middle school and the elementary school in Mount Holly and I counted between the back of the school and the front of school, five police cars sitting on the side of the road. And it, it, it just gave you a sense of that somebody's paying attention and that they're looking. I also thank the police chief of Mount Holly when I saw him Sunday, and I know that you two spoke, and he's over all the other chiefs, and he's going to recommend that they all do this. So thank you for our collaboration with our policeman, Mr. Booker. say some things to our principals to remind our students when they see something that is not right regardless of what it is they need to report it. yes sir it was you all know each of our classrooms has a crisis notebook in it it was refreshing people let's go through that again just refresh that as well as let's be on our p's and q's as folks are coming in and out of our buildings and aware of the things talking about warm weather propping windows propping doors being sensitive to that and our, our principals do an outstanding job of making folks aware of that and it takes the whole school doing it uh, teachers have done phenomenal things there are opportunities that uh, teachers thwart all the time because they pay attention to what is going on in our schools we'll let mr booker finish his comments <laughs> Um, uh, thank you again on accreditation. The advanced ed team was very complimentary of the time they spent with you, and it would have been easy for you to have another commitment and ignore that, but uh, you don't get a powerful practice that talks about the engagement of leadership without the leadership that you all provide. Um, and this just shows your commitment to the schools and to our students and to our employees. So thank you, because I believe it was a valuable process for us and that we learned a lot. Uh, I couldn't let these comments go without, you know, ringing your ears a little bit and reminding you about are you smarter than a fifth grader. This year's program was larger than ever, and Amy Spencer and her team deserve a special thank you for doing an excellent job of putting that on. Uh, this is a really neat program that is what is the main funder of our Ron Inslee grants, which have done some great innovative things in our schools that have led to school-wide programs. And it's really impressive. And this year, Lowell Elementary and PSNC Energy were the winning team. And it was quite exciting there at the end in their round of uh, champions that they did that. So we just thank all the companies that participated in the support, the parents that came out. It was a packed house at uh, Stuart Kramer High School that night. And that concludes my comments, Mr. Chair. Ms. Cherry. Mr. Booker has thanked everybody but we need to thank him because without his vision and his leadership we couldn't do what we do and our employees so. thank you we've got four thousand folks that work very hard every day on behalf of children and it is amazing what these folks do above and beyond and I, it's just an honor to be a part of them uh, Mr. Chair, we do need a closed session for personnel tomorrow. Okay, we need to uh, have an executive session uh, under North Carolina General Statute 143-318.11, paragraph A6 for personnel. Motion by Mr. Devon to go in executive session, second by Mr. Ramsey. Any questions or discussions? All those in favor, show by raising your hand. And we are going into executive session.
Thank you. We're back in open session. Um, I'd like to thank the board for a long day. Y'all have uh, 
have put in a lot of work, and I want to thank you for that. Um, this week is a big week. Um, tomorrow, Mr. Bur Booker's birthday, the 20th, uh, the 22nd of this week, Miss Roberts' birthday, and uh, the 26th is my birthday. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it is. So. All right, with that, I need a motion to adjourn. Mr. Devman, second by Miss Cherry. All those in favor, show by raising your hand. And we are adjourned. <laughs>